What makes off-road riding so tough? Mostly, it's the obstacles. The ruts and the road jumps are probably the most scary to me. Probably downhills, I think, are the toughest. The pucker bushes, because they kind of just reach out and grab you. Rocks are always difficult, always a real challenge. As every rider knows, off-road life has its ups and downs. But there are inside secrets to handling off-road obstacles that make riding much easier and a lot more fun. Because you never know what lurks beneath the surface, water can be a tricky obstacle. Stay alert and loose on the bike. Don't go too fast or too slow. Maintain a steady speed. And don't be afraid to dab it or put your foot down to keep your balance. Scan ahead for overhanging branches, roots, slippery rocks, and unexpected drop-offs. When you hit a mud bog, be prepared to lose some power. Don't fight it. Stay aggressive using a controlled throttle to keep up your momentum. When you combine mud with an obstacle like this ledge, momentum becomes even more critical. Well, at least you got the bike over. But if your approach is too slow, or you don't think you have enough traction, don't even make the attempt. Get off and bulldog to firmer ground. And even on dry land, you need good speed to conquer a ledge. From boulders to pebbles, rocks are another kind of obstacle that always challenge a rider's skill. Especially when you don't see them. On hills, rocks can be a nightmare. It's difficult to maintain traction, so stand up and get ready to handle any sudden moves. Remember, it's always better to choose a line away from obstacles when you can. Rocks are notoriously unpredictable. If you do find yourself in a rough spot, be careful not to use too much brake. But don't let the bike get away from you either. Feather the clutch and give it just a little throttle. During a trail ride, you'll often come across unavoidable obstacles like fallen trees. Make sure you keep the front end high when you wheelie over, or you might get hung up. And even when you think you're out of the woods, plants like manzanita, cactus, and palmetto are some of the obstacles that can still hold you up. It takes a skilled eye to find a line through vegetation like this. Sometimes you can blast through bushes. Other times it makes more sense just to get off and maneuver around them. Of all the obstacles out there, by far the most challenging are the ruts. Tricky enough on flat ground, ruts are even more demanding on an incline. Keep your tires clear. Even with all these riding tips, don't forget that wearing the right safety gear is your best defense against all kinds of obstacles. Always wear a helmet, boots, jersey, gloves, and leathers. Rocks, ruts, downhills, off cambers. Obstacles like these can make even the most skilled ATV rider nervous. Gnarly terrain is an everyday part of off-road life, but obstacles can be conquered if you know the right techniques. Unless you want to ride in a parking lot all day, hills are the one obstacle you must learn how to handle. But it's not the hill itself that scares most new riders. It's the rocks and ruts that cause all the problems. With any ATV, the key to conquering obstacles is clutch and throttle control, line selection, and body position. On a four-wheeler, it's often easier to ride over rocks, but watch out for a sudden loss of traction. The back wheels of a three-wheeler can clear most obstacles, but there's still the front end to deal with. Pop the clutch and wheelie over. Big wheel riders can use their feet to maintain balance and stick to their line, but don't try this on a three- or four-wheeler. Ruts are tricky, even on a quad. If you clip one, don't panic, stay in control. Always avoid crossing a rut on a downhill. Pick a safe line before you start. As you can see, protective gear is essential, no matter what kind of ATV you ride. Out on the trail, it's important to stay alert as you negotiate through tight sections. Estimate your clearance room first, and remember, obstacles are waiting for you on all sides. When you have to tackle roadblocks, like this fallen log, use the clutch to loft the front end. Then shift your weight forward to get the rear wheels over. If you don't shift your weight, the machine could buck you off, or you might not make it at all. Wheelies can also be great for getting through heavy underbrush. Long obstacle sections, like this dry stream bed, require a different technique. Stand up, stay loose, and be ready to handle quick changes in direction. Two-wheel riders can dab it to keep from going over. And three-wheelers can just shift and tilt to avoid rocks completely. In the water, rocks can be treacherous. They're loose and slippery, and you can't always see them. 
Concentration is essential, but be flexible. Adapt to the demands of the terrain. Fat-wheeled ATVs can get sideways in places where three- and four-wheelers might feel more stable. Make sure your machine is waterproof. Seal the airbox and insulate the electrical system. Of course, other ATVs have problems with the wet stuff, too. If you do get caught, rock the bike back and forth until you can slip off. ATVs can even style over ledges. The trick is to shift your weight as you approach the top to get the back wheels clear. You'll need good momentum to carry you over, especially in sand or loose dirt. And going down a ledge, just make sure you look before you leap. Many new ATV enthusiasts write to us and ask, why can't I ride an ATV as well as I ride a dirt bike? The answer is, you can. Once you understand that ATVs and dirt bikes go by a different set of rules. Compared to a motorcycle, ATVs can be deceptively easy to operate. But even though you're moving on one, that doesn't mean you're in control. With a dirt bike, you learn immediately. If you don't maintain momentum, you'll lose balance and fall. You can't just sit on an ATV either. It takes momentum and a lot of body English to handle a three, four, or big wheeler. Basically, it's a matter of size. ATVs are bigger than motorcycles. They're heavier, wider, and not as easy to fling around. The additional weight isn't much of a problem when you're riding on a flat line. But when you're on an incline, the pounds are much more noticeable, especially when you're having trouble cleaning the hill to begin with. In a situation like this, tossing away a motorcycle is easy. But getting clear of an ATV can be a little trickier. In sand, ATVs are just a lot more fun than dirt bikes. At low speeds, a motorcycle's narrow tires dig in, and at high speeds, the wheels get sideways all too easily. ATVs, on the other hand, have wider profile knobbies more suitable for sand riding. Cornering ATVs requires good body English, both to maximize speed and to control the pitch. And even though they have two wheels like motorcycles, big wheelers steer more like an ATV and a dirt bike combined. Don't think that a light touch will do it. Lean hard on the bars and extend your leg for balance. Jumping ATVs can also be a new experience for the ex-motorcyclist. Dirt bikes feel lighter in the air, flying higher and further than ATVs. Again, weight is the critical factor, whether you're going up or coming back down. With balloon tires, there's usually an added bounce to your landings. If you can wheelie a motorcycle, you won't have too much trouble pulling one off on a three-wheeler. You'll probably find it harder to lift the front end of a big wheeler or a quad. Unlike motorcycles, just popping the clutch on an ATV won't be enough to hoist the front. Brute strength is the secret. And because they're wider, it's also difficult to see around an ATV when you're riding the rear wheels. But wheelie technique can be a great help when tackling off-road obstacles. Probably, though, you'll just want a wheelie for fun. The most important difference you'll discover when coming from dirt bikes to ATVs will be the amount of body English you'll need to control the vehicle. With any kind of ATV, body position is the key to safe handling, and safe handling is the key to having fun. Wheelies not only look spectacular, but are an effective way to handle obstacles in both motocross and general off-road riding. Let's start with some basic wheelie technique. One of the best ways to learn how to loft the front end is by practicing first on a hill. When you're on an incline, it's easier to lift the front wheel than when you're on flat ground. Of course, leave it to Larry Rosser to pick this mountain as his practice hill. The art of wheelie is based on these four principles. Good body position proper throttle control, adequate use of the clutch, and balanced braking. If you can, keep your body in the middle of the bike. The higher the front wheel, the closer you should be to the tank. Use your arms and legs to help distribute your weight to maintain balance. And don't try to hot dog it right away. One false move and you might lose it. For pros and beginners, equilibrium is everything. Throttle control is equally important. Practice giving it just enough gas so that you can keep the front end up without going over backwards. And feather the clutch to stay in the power band. The most crucial part of wheeling is careful use of the rear brake. Don't use the front brake. The rear brake is the only thing that keeps you from looping out. Now, take those wheelie basics and head to the racetrack. 
With the power wheelie out of a turn, first rail out of the corner, snap the clutch, then pin the throttle to the stops. Keep the front end light so that only the rear wheel touches the track. If there's a whoop section after the corner, loft the front wheel and let the rear wheel skip over the bumps. The result is both smoother and faster. In general off-road riding, wheelies will help you get over obstacles like ledges. When crossing unexpected gullies, keep the front wheel high, pull back on the bars, flip the throttle and unload by standing up. And remember to keep your speed up on approach. Sometimes you can use a power wheelie to get across ruts and ditches. Speed is essential. Even on a drop-off, keep the front high to avoid indoing. Wheelies are also effective in clearing logs and bushes. Just loft up and over. A lot of riders like to wheelie across water, but we found that a high-speed assault can be much easier and drier. But watch out for hidden obstacles. So whether you're just kicking loose or getting in some serious riding, these are the elements of wheelie technique to keep in mind. Braking. Use the rear brake to keep from looping out. Body position. Use your whole body to maintain equilibrium. Throttle and clutch control. Sustain a balance between momentum and the height of the front wheel. Sliding, pitching it, backing it in. Getting sideways can be a real blast, but it's not just a way to have fun. Learning proper sliding technique is the way to make cornering your ATV both safer and easier. When it comes to corners, it's important to understand the differences in handling between two, three, and four wheelers. For instance, you might think that big wheelers react more like motorcycles while turning, but you'll probably have to manhandle a BW just to make it slide. And body position is even more critical on a three-wheeler. You have to shift your weight to the inside of the corner. A lot of riders find four-wheelers easier to corner, but you still have to lean into the turn. Corners call for power slides or braking slides. With a power slide, you have to stay on the gas and muscle the bars to control the pitch. On a three-wheeler, get off the seat and shift your weight well to the inside to keep the rear wheels down. And if you start to high side, roll off the throttle before things get out of hand. Once you've chosen the line, pour on the power and feather the clutch if the engine starts to bog. With any kind of slide, don't try to change direction or come off the gas suddenly. You could stall, high side, or even overshoot your mark. And big wheelers have a mind of their own when it comes to turning. You have to use your whole body to help you make the corner. At this speed, it might be better to downshift than to clutch it to maintain your momentum. And remember, only on a two-wheeler can you extend your leg for balance. In a tight turn, body position is even more critical for both three and four wheelers. Three wheelers should weight the outside peg while still leaning hard to the inside. Because if you don't shift your weight, the bike will spit you off. The same goes for a four wheeler, especially in a rut infested uphill corner like this one. To brake slide, first clutch it and downshift to avoid stalling. Give it some throttle and use the rear brake to slow you down, then pop the clutch and gas it. Four wheelers often have a tendency to spin out. Use the clutch and front brake to maintain control. BWs and three wheelers can use the front brake on approach, but they should only use the rear brake when turning. Front braking cuts into your momentum and inhibits your sliding power. You could wash out, nosedive, or even stall. As you know, races can be won or lost in the corner. When you're in the lead, you can shut the door on your opponent by sliding right into his line, or, in this case, the leader takes the inside going in, then blocks the faster outside line. This forces the other rider to spin out when he tries to avoid a collision. So whether you're on a two, three, or four wheeler, concentrate on clutch and throttle control with a power slide and good body position with a braking slide. And if you can, try practicing on sand. Mastering these techniques will help you get sideways only when you want to get sideways. Ask any ATV rider which obstacle gives you the most trouble, and 10 to 1 he'll tell you, jumps. Definitely off cambers. Both jumps and off cambers. Yes, these obstacles can be tough, but we'll show you how to handle them. A lot of new riders avoid jumps because they can be kind of tricky, but once you get the hang of it, you'll never go back to the flat. Whether you're racing on a track or riding on a trail, you'll need good body position and throttle control to make the jump. 
With any kind of ATV, you should approach the takeoff ramp in a neutral position. Wheels straight, weight centered. When you reach the lip of the jump, flip the throttle to help you get airborne. But in midair, stay off the gas unless your front end starts to drop. It's better to have the back wheels slightly lower than the front, both in the air and on landing. Remember, if you jump crooked, you'll land crooked. Correct your position in the air by tilting to the opposite side. And landing, that's the critical part of every jump. Big wheelers, be prepared for turbulence. These babies bounce. Three wheelers, make sure that both rear tires hit at the same time. If not, you'll endo or high side. Watch how you land on four wheelers. Their weight is more central, but you can still flip. Once you've touched down, gas it right away to minimize rebound. If there's a berm turn next, you can stay on the throttle. But if it's a tight turn, just brake slide it around the curb. Jumping tabletops is different. Get back on approach, then lean forward as you clear the ramp. Try to land level with the downward slope. Blind jumps like this can be dangerous because you can't see what's on the other side. If you blitz over the top, you might not be able to handle what's waiting on the downslope. Off cambers are another kind of obstacle that always give a rider the willies. Again, body position and throttle control are key. However, even more than with jumps, off camber technique is very different depending on the kind of ATV. Big wheel riders should lean into the hill, holding the bike out and away from the slope. Your rear tire can lose traction and slip downhill, so don't gas it suddenly or go too slow either. Keep a steady speed and extend your leg for balance. With three wheelers, body English is everything. Don't be afraid to shift to the inside as far as you can. Weight both the rear wheel and the foot peg. Too much gas or not enough leaning and your tires will slip. Regain control by turning the front wheel slightly uphill. Quads have the fourth wheel advantage that keeps the bike more in line with the slant. Although the weight bias is central, you still have to shift your body sideways to keep your tracking straight. And too much throttle can get four-wheelers spinning donuts too. So whether you're in the air or on the ground, be sure to use body position and throttle control if you want to stay on course. Hills are the kind of obstacle everyone wants to take on. There's just something about a hill that's naturally challenging. The steeper, the rockier, the ruddier it is, the more satisfied you feel when you make it to the top. There are no hard, fast rules about hill climbing. Every hill is different. But there are some basic tricks of the trade you should know. Good body position is critical. Watch Team Husqvarna's Larry Rossler keep his weight between the middle and front of the seat, with his chest forward and slightly over the bars. He moves from side to side with the bike, letting him pull him up the hill. He keeps his feet on the pegs as much as possible to avoid sliding back. Another element is momentum. It's important to get your speed up as you approach the hill. If you don't get a good run at the base, you reduce your chances of making it all the way to the top. The third key is clutch control. Pick a gear that will let you approach the base at the highest practical speed. Fanning the clutch will keep the engine in the heart of the power band and also helps you keep the front end down. Of course, the really challenging part about Killer Hills is handling the obstacles. Rocks, ruts, ledges, loose dirt. Pick a line that will keep your tires out of ruts. If you hit a rock, don't panic. Let off the throttle and use the clutch to keep the front end low. Ledges in the middle of a climb are really tricky. Keep your weight forward, back off the throttle for an instant, and let momentum carry you over. Sometimes too much throttle can get you into trouble. Here I almost loop out, then use the clutch to save it at the last second. If there's a lip at the top of the hill, lean forward, then back off and let the bike fly over the lip. Make sure you pick a line clear to the top. Remember that the last few feet can be the toughest. If you approach the hill too slow, you won't have enough momentum. At this point, downshifting is hopeless. Sometimes you think you've actually made it, then find yourself in a position like this. Step off on the high side, then decide what you want to do next. If you decide to go back down, stay on the high side, hold the front brake and wiggle the bars until the front wheel slips down. Then either bulldog it or ride it back to the bottom. And of course, there's always the tip web, tug it to the top method. So when you're going uphill, keep in mind these basics, body position, momentum, and clutch and throttle control. Because you don't always know what's on the other side of every hill, it's important to know how to get back down. 
First of all, once you've decided to go down, you must be completely committed. Because there's no easy way to stop once you started, your initial approach must be slow. The three basic elements of downhill riding technique are braking, body position, and line selection. The first skill you need to master is braking. Watch Rossler keep his fingers poised over both clutch and front brake. He maintains a careful balance to keep from stalling while still braking. And remember, even on a foo-foo hill like this, too much front brake means trouble. Likewise, too much rear brake will cause loss of traction and uncontrolled sliding. Body position is also critical. Rossler stands on the pegs, keeping his weight back with head forward over the bars, elbows extended. He doesn't fight the machine, but instead lets it move freely beneath him. The third element is line selection. Take the time to check for a clear line all the way to the bottom. Even the best riders always look for potential problems before they commit themselves. Don't forget, obstacles like bushes, ruts, ledges, and rocks present a different challenge each time. If you can't avoid an obstacle, don't fight the bike. Let momentum do its work. With rocks, stay off the brakes and roll right across. With ruts, keep your wheels clear and keep the bike loose underneath you. With a ledge, try to push out and away as you soar over. You can handle ledges like regular jumps. Just get back a little further on the bike. And if you're not sure you can make it, bulldog or walk the bike down the hill. Or, if you can, pick a different way. Whatever you decide, these are the basic points of downhill technique. Braking. Keep a balance between clutching and braking to maintain the right speed without stalling. Body position. Stay in the middle of the bike, feet on the pegs, head forward. Line selection. Choose a line clear to the bottom with as few obstacles as possible.